now the next thing we have to do is we're going to do a three axle alignment why do we do a three axle alignment well we just moved everything everything the entire frame rails and everything moved so wherever the suspension was at before it has changed position now it may not have changed it a whole lot but we do need to check everything and make sure it's all right back in line or at least realign it all right so before we get started a word from our sponsors no i'm just kidding uh but go check out my uh store over at etsy.com etsy bending with bending at etsy.com uh, i got some pointer fingers i think i'm gonna do is is i'm gonna get a roll of electrical tape and maybe go ahead and tape some up myself we'll see how that goes comment below also i got shirts hats all that good stuff check it out all right let's go all right so here's some fun facts that you don't know most air suspension started out by a frenchman back in the 1920s it's nothing new, you know. This is pretty old technology. A weirdo named George Messier. I can't even say that. I guess the air suspension design was from the French. Mm. Now, the customer stated that he had new bush ends. Everything looks good. You gotta put this step back on. <laughs> now, the truck we're working on today has a low leaf air suspension. Yes, it's kind of a pain in the butt to you know, loosen up all these parts to get this thing adjusted. But this thing came out back in 1987, I believe right around the same time that the 379 came about as well. Before that, there really wasn't much of an option for the uh, air suspension design. I mean, there was a few different models, but they were all pretty much the same. Peterbilt later came out with the air track system. It's a lot heavier system, and it was good for 46,000 pounds. All right, so three axle alignment. Now the beeline system that I use here in this uh, video is uh, actually still used today. It's just a little bit smaller version. This is a little bit older version from back in the, yeah, I'd say mid to late 80s, early 90s, somewhere in there. They completely revolutionized it uh, a few years ago, and it's a whole lot lighter and easier to move around. Before World War II, George L. Hunt invented and marketed many early tools for the alignment and in industrial field. By the early 1920s, the first frame correction machine was invented by him, and company was renamed Beeline. Anyway, the cool thing about these products is most of them are American made. They still make the same thing today, as you can see. Okay. Yeah. I'm just gonna that anyway, the laser goes through that and goes to the other end. <laughs> now this one has a cool little target on it here, so you can see. Target. Of course, it's a lot harder on trucks like International crap like that. Well, that looks pretty darn dead center to me. The first angle that we just measured is called your thrust angle, okay? And now we're going to set and check your tram angle, okay? So here we go. This is usually where we find out if anybody's paying attention, okay? If anybody's doing it right or how bad the machine is because this manually checks it, okay? There's a hole right here, dead center in this axle, right? For the tooling, I guess. One here and one there, okay? Take this, stick it in that little thing. I think it was made for it, I don't know. Perfectly in there. <clears throat> Moment of truth, we go check the other side. Put it here. And, oh, it's off. See that? In right there. And the measurement is off. It's probably about an eighth, you know? But this is enough. This, this measurement needs to be dead on because that's enough to cause some you know, damage to the uh, front driver. So well, now you ask yourself, which side do we move? Well, hmm, that side is further forward than this side. So we look, okay, okay we got a bunch of shims right there. Okay, let's go to the other side. Now, if this measurement from here to here is too far apart, okay, and your thrust angle's off and your tram angle's off the opposite direction, you're gonna go down the road and the back end's gonna feel like it's fishtailing, Whee! okay? And you're gonna see some serious chop on the inside edge, inside edge of your tire here and here. It's gonna look really weird. This side, been changed. You got some washers in there. I know a lot of, oh, I gotta take that off. I'm glad I came over and looked. Uh, 
this side looks like it's been taken out before, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and uh, this tank is in the way here, and I don't really feel like messing with all that stuff on this side because I don't have a lot of room. So I'm gonna go ahead and go back to the other side, and because uh, it's easier. So basically, I'm gonna come to this side right here, and I'm gonna move this out of the way, and uh, I've already got the uh, step loose, as you can see here. And we're gonna take these bolts out, loosen that bolt off, loosen that U-bolt off, and add us about um, about an eighth inch in there, maybe a little bit more. Eighth and a sixteenth, probably. We'll go three sixteenths. Tighten it back up and check it again. Now you guys love my air leak, right? Okay. We're gonna check that real quick. Push that forward. Put that in there. Go ahead and throw an eighth in there. So, I'm going to make sure you do that this way because I don't like ever losing all the, all of them. You don't want to get in there too far. an eighth. Should have went with a sixteenth like I said I was going to. <gasps> Alright, here we go. Go. We put it right here in that hole. Bam. You got it right there in that hole. This is how you know you got it right, right here. Right there, bam. Bam, look at there, huh? Now we get to take it all off. Yay. Then we check the front. Let's see how well this thing drives, So now that we got this all wrapped up here, you know, uh, 
guess I'm gonna go call a customer. Anyway, thanks everybody for watching. Really appreciate it. Uh, hope this video changed some, I don't know, coming up with different ideas and stuff, trying to come up with different videos. Uh, comment on any ideas that you'd like to see in the videos and stuff like that, or, you know, comment questions or whatever you have. You guys have been doing great. Really appreciate all the support. Thanks.